Jack Daniels. I'm your drinking buddy. All right, drinking buddies. So I got the new Jack Daniels twice barreled special release American single malt. Who would have thought Jack Daniels American single malt? Um, pretty much everything Jack Daniels does, they do well. So can this compete with some heavy hitters in the Scotch world? As well as a heavy hitter in the American single malt world? So uh, you know me, I like to do my reviews blind because I don't want my bias to get in the way. This is a shiny new toy. I don't want the shiny new toy to automatically win. Uh, so we're doing this blind. But this is a 106.1 proof, twice barreled American single malt that has been finished in sherry casks, specifically Oloroso sherry. So from uh, Spain. I thought that that might be a good idea to put up against some other sherry finished stuff. So I had two, I had this Glen Morangy, this is the La Santa, this is Highland Single Malt, Scotch Whiskey, but it's a sherry cask finish. So it started in American Oak Bourbon casks and then finished in sherry casks. Might be a little bit of a similar thing going on here since this started in a, you know, a charred bourbon barrel. Um, this one's going to be 86 proof though, so lo much lower proof. Next up, I wanted to put in um, Delbox Fall Release. This is the distiller's cut. Why did I pick this? Similar proof point, it's 107 proof. It's really freaking good. Um, so I, I, I want people to understand that if you hunt for something like this, it might be easier to find something local in your area that's just as good. Let's find out. And then lastly, I have this Kirkland 23 year old single malt that has a sherry cask finish. It's 92 proof. So low proof, middle proof, and then the higher end proof for single malts. I think the only thing we can really do here is dive in. First glass. Now I'm noticing that this one is much lighter in color than the rest, but luckily I wasn't paying attention when I poured them because I don't know which one was lighter color, but I will point out lighter color on here. This one's got honey and citrus and malt. I, I don't really know how other way to describe it other than malt. Um, for the longest time, I thought I didn't really like sherry finish. And the truth is, I don't really like scotch that much. Um, that to me is band-aids. It's funky. It's not good. I'm not a fan of whatever that is. And I would wager, I would wager that that is one of these two. That's a scotch. I would put money on it. I would put I would put a pinky on it. Well, I only have two of those. Let's see, what's something more valuable? I would bet one of my livers on it. So glad we get two of those. Okay, so this guy, this guy here has got some smokiness on it. A little bit of possibly mesquite. Maybe this is the, the distillers cut. But yeah, this has got like, Dark chocolate? Whew, yeah, this is a nice nose. This is a really nice nose. Mmm. Mmm. That is sweet. That is honey. That has got a great viscosity to it. Unfortunately, I know exactly what it is. That is the Delbach, and that is excellent. It's funny, I'm not that uh, used to drinking single malts and I'm, I, I, have, I have a feeling this is a queen sweep waiting to happen here. Maybe I give myself a softball though because of the different proofs. Oh, okay. This is a good nose. This is oaky. Like fresh rain on on like a stump. You're, you're hiking in the woods and it, it, it just got done raining. And you're smelling the trees all around you. This is this is a nice nose. Okay, so while that did have a great nose, it still got like this 
malty, scotchy funk to it to me that I'm just not a big fan of. Um, on the nose, it smells very old. I mean, the palette, that, that tastes like maybe like a seven or eight, like as far as like age and complexity, I would expect a seven or eight year old bourbon to have that much age and complexity to it. And that's 23 years old. I am like 99% sure that, that is the, that is the Kirkland 23. Not great. <laughs> Sorry guys, if you're if you're Scotch fans and you came here to see me talk about how great Scotch is, it's, it's just not going to happen. I, you're you're never going to make me like Scotch. Irish, I like. American single malts, I like. Bourbon, I love. Rye, I love. Even tequila, I really like. Our last glass here, which by process of elimination, this should be the Jack. Oh, easily the best nose. Oh yeah, this is this is a great nose. It smells like it's got older. Like if this, if I was doing this double blind, I would just by the nose assume this is the oldest. Cause it's got like a really great, like oaky, musty. It it smells old. But it's also got like a sweet oak thing on there and like brown sugar. Mm-hmm. So I can tell when I'm drinking a single malt because you get that malt flavor, but I don't know why. There just to me is a difference between an American single malt and a scotch. And I think that could be the barrel. So scotch is usually started in a used bourbon barrel, but American single malts are usually started in a charred new oak barrel. So it gives them a little bit more bourbon flavor than something that's just merely sitting in a bourbon barrel. You might think, oh, it's a bourbon barrel, it's gonna add bourbon flavors to it. But the truth is, I feel like a lot of the bourbon flavor comes from that charred barrel. And most of that flavor is gonna be absorbed by the time they sell that barrel to, to Scotland and fill it up with scotch. So I think that the American single malts win right there because they have that they have that charred oak barrel in their favor. It's great that Scotland and even Ireland started the processes that we use here in America, but I'm just a patriot and I think we do it better. <laughs> really, we're aided by our climate. Um, but I don't have to go through this again. I can tell you exactly which is which. La Santa, this is the... Um, Uh, the Del Bac, the Kirkland, and lastly, the um, the Twice Barreled. The two really good ones are the Twice Barreled and the Del Bac, and these two are, this is a third and this is a distant fourth. So I, the distant fourth, I believe, is the La Santa. So we'll start there. Yep, that's the La Santa. Dis, uh, you know, a third place was our Kirkland. Second place by a hair, like really, it's really close is the Del Bac, and then first place was our our Jack Daniels. So um, what did this experiment tell us? Well, it told us that my palate doesn't really like scotch. It's continuing to become so apparent. I thought about doing this with Irish whiskey, but I saw that these two were sherry finished, and I thought, this one sherry finished, let's do that. Probably should have done Irish, because I would have given those whiskeys a fighting chance to beat this and this. Um, but uh, what else did we learn here today? There are probably some great American single malts in your area that you haven't tried yet that are as good as bottles you're hunting. Because this thing is excellent. I love this Del Bac uh, Fall um, 2022 Distiller's Cut. Um, anything from Whiskey Del Bac, go out 
find some Whiskey Del Bach, go out and try some Jack Daniels Twice Barreled Special Release if you can find it, and skip on the scotch. <laughs> Sorry guys if you like scotch, it's just not my jam. Drinking buddies, I really appreciate you watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Don't forget, you stayed this long, like, subscribe. Tell me in the comments down below how wrong I am about scotch. Tell me what scotches I should try down below. Um, leave a comment down below what scotches I need to try. What's going to change my palate? Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Like and subscribe.